This video is literally how to start carnivore, things and lessons I've learned, and things I would go back and change if I could snap my fingers and start this journey over. The first part of the video will go over how to start and everything that is in that. The second part of the video is going to go over what to expect once you start. I broke how to start carnivore down into nine different kind of stages and steps and I've revamped these as I have gone along this journey in this process. So I want to share it for any of those that are wanting to do carnivore, struggling with carnivore, or you just want to learn about it. The first one is focusing on one step at a time. How do you eat a mammoth? One bite at a time. And I don't mean how do you eat an elephant. Mammoths are bigger. And let's be honest, struggling, if you've struggled with binge eating, weight loss, or just getting healthy, it's a really big thing to deal with. It's dealing with the physiological and the psychological components of it. So one step at a time. How do you win a race? Literally one step. How did I lose 121 pounds? By losing one pound 121 times. Celebrate the small things. Don't focus on the end goal because then it's just so big. Like literally, I used to just get so stuck because I'm literally like, how do I eat a mammoth? This thing is so huge. I don't even know where to start. I need to lose 210 pounds. How do I even start that? One bite at a time, one step at a time. Slow yourself down. Focus on today, maybe tomorrow, but no further than that. Number two is what to eat and when. There is a sliding scale from lion diet down to dirty carnivore when we're just talking about carnivore itself. Lion diet is very good for people wanting to do an elimination diet that are wanting to kind of isolate if they have rheumatic issues going on or heck some other things going on. Lion diet consists of eating ruminant meat only, salt, and water. It's very strict but it has its purpose. All the way down to dirty carnivore. I do dirty carnivore. I eat all types of meat, including seafood, fish, chicken, beef, you name it. If it's meat, I eat it. If it's an animal product, I eat it. Eggs, those kinds of things. I also use spices. Now, for the most part, we use garlic powder and onion powder with salt 98% of the time now, but you can do other things as long as you tolerate them. I also do high quality, high fat dairy. Heavy cream, hard cheeses are the best. Okay, milk, not a great option because there's a lot of sugar and carbohydrates in that. You decide where you fall along the spectrum. Maybe you have a dairy allergy, don't do dairy. Maybe dairy slows your weight loss down, don't do it. Spices bother you, throw them out. This is a very individualized choice of what you do and what works for you. Okay, along with ketovore, which is kind of a step over. Ketovore allows some dark green or low carb vegetables that are preferably not inflammatory, a few times a week with the rest majority being meat. If you are a vegetable lover and you feel fine eating them, you don't have any issues with oxalates, which cause inflammation for people like me with rheumatic issues, do keto warm. You have to decide what's going to work for you. Okay, all the way to keto if that's your thing. I personally don't do keto. It gives me too much room to move around and fudge things and I found that I slowly would make like a keto pizza and then this and then that and then all of a sudden I'm eating a regular pizza. For binge eating, my personal recommendation out of me experiencing it is I find carnivore works best for me because it removes all the carbs and all the sugars. It removes my triggers. I lack the ability to moderate. So abstinence has worked amazingly well for me. Not that I've been perfect, but it has worked immensely well. For ketovore and carnivore, I want to reiterate, fruit is a no-no. Now, let's say you're super healthy metabolically, you've never had diabetes and these kinds of things, and you want to eat fruit here and there, you do you, no judgment from me. I know there are some people who are carnivore that have fruit here and there, and if that works for you, that's okay. I was a type 2 diabetic. I had a lot of health issues going on to improve my insulin resistance, no sugar. And there is quite a bit of sugar in fruit, in fructose form, and it's inflammatory. So again, these are choices you have to make and what are you willing to give up to get on the journey that you need to be on. The second part of the second part is when to eat. 
There is no simple answer to this. In the beginning, what I strongly suggest you do is focus on eating to not let yourself get hungry. It's very hard, it's a physiological, I want to eat carbs in the beginning when you're going from a standard American diet to a low to no carb diet. In the beginning, for the first few weeks, I actually didn't worry about how frequently I was eating, how much I was eating. The goal was getting into ketosis to get fat adapted, period. That is what I suggest in the beginning. As you get fat adapted, you will naturally notice your hunger levels go down and down. So maybe you were eating three meals a day and then you eat two meals a day and a snack and now maybe sometime you do one meal a day. I did one meal a day for months. I, however, I found over time, two meals a day is perfect for me. I end up eating less volume of food overall, eating twice a day. If it doesn't work for some people, some need three, some need one. It just varies on what you need. And honestly, I think trial and error. The big thing is focus on learning after you get into ketosis, learning what true hunger feels like. That is vital. Don't eat until you're so stuffed that you're like, oh, I'm so full as you get into ketosis because then you're eating too much. We only need to eat what our body needs and it gives us signals. We just have to be willing to listen to them. And honestly, because I spent most of my life binge eating, I never actually truly understood what that felt like. Like I just completely overridden and ignored those signals of, I stop eating, you really don't need anymore. What I learned is, oh, my stomach is like bloated. Uh, I guess I ate too much. That is what I'd gotten used to, okay? Vital. To work on this. A big thing people ask all the time is, should I slowly transition or should I just jump into carnivore? There is no straight answer. I had cake one day, carnivore the next, but I know my personality and I don't do well with weaning in. So you have to decide that yourself. It is less of a shock to the system if you can wean yourself down. I normally would suggest that, but at the same time, you know you better than me, so you have to decide which one works for you. The next thing is fasting. I am not a big proponent of fasting. I do intermittent fasting between meals, but long-term fasts in the beginning, I think are very dangerous for people who are binge eaters. It makes you rely solely on willpower and willpower always fails. The cravings are crazy. If you can do it, kudos, but it is not something I recommend in the beginning is to start with fasting. And last, because I know somebody's going to ask me this, is what should your macros be? How much protein should you be eating? How much fat? I do a high fat, moderate protein, low to no carb carnivore diet. I do not track my macros. I eat what I need and I listen to my body and this is honing in. In the beginning, I can tell you my first few weeks to few months, I was definitely eating I think more than I needed to because I was just trying to get fat adapted. But I aim for at least 50% of my food to be fat. Ribeye is a good example. It's 50-50, 50 protein, 50% fat. If I want to do maybe 60% or 70% fat that day, I'll add some butter to the steak. I do not fret about anything like that. Number three, fully accept that this is a lifestyle, not a temporary diet. To me, that is what led to yo-yo dieting my entire life. I'm going to do X diet for X amount of months to get X amount of weight loss, and then I'll be there. But even if I got there, I went back to the way I was eating. Maybe not overnight, but slowly. And then six months down the road, it's like, oh, okay, well, I've gained everything back plus a little bit more. How did this happen? Because I kept treating it as a temporary thing. But this is a lifestyle. I view carnivore as a lifestyle. It doesn't mean I'm going to be perfect. I have not. I've had off carnivore meals along my one year journey. And I can be very honest and say I will continue throughout my life. Why? How do I know this? Because I'm not perfect. And I don't expect to be. But that does mean my aim is 98% of my diet. I want to be carnivore. 100% would be great. But I will accept 90 to 98% without a blink of an eye. Something also I want to mention with this is when we fully accept that this is a lifestyle, those cravings in the beginning of I don't want X, I want Y, they start to dissipate because 
It doesn't actually matter what I want. Eating what I want got me to 360 pounds. I need to do what I need to do, not what I want to do. That was a huge like paradigm shift for me, realizing I had to let go of what I wanted and just do what I needed. Not that I can't enjoy what I'm eating, but it definitely lifted this veil of, okay, I've been eating most of my life by based on what I wanted, not what I've needed. Number four, this is a big one. Set yourself up for success. Got a long list of tips that I have used and have discovered along this journey. The first one is get the food out of your house. If you're going to do carnivore, remove the non-carnivore food. If you can't take it all out because you're not the only person in the house, put it somewhere that is out of sight. Put it in a different cabinet. If there's something in the refrigerator that just has to be refrigerated, literally take a hand towel and put it over it. So when you open the fridge, you don't have to see it. Just seeing it triggers the desire to eat it. Okay, this kind of rolls into if you're struggling, don't watch TV and commercials that have food. Honestly, just avoiding the TV is the best plan ever. I like watching Korean shows and I found because a lot of it is around food. I'd watch it and they'd be like, oh man, I'm hungry. I don't even like white rice that much, but it's like, oh, that white rice looks delicious. And I found it was just triggering me want to eat because I saw it. The next big one is Reading Atomic Habits by James Clear. This book, I think every single person should read. It teaches us how to get where we want to get by changing the small things, by changing our habits and setting up systems in place to get us there. Goals are great, but what it actually matters is the in-between. The system is how we get from here to here. The goal is down here, but it really matters of how we get from one place to another. And that's what Atomic Habit teaches. I am doing a series going over each chapter. If you're not a big reader, that you can go and watch and I'll do a new chapter every single week. Drink some kind of electrolyte mix. I use something like LMNT. It has sodium, magnesium, and potassium in it. And it really helps when you go from a high carb to low carb diet preventing the muscle cramps, headaches, fatigues, and these kinds of things that happen from low electrolytes. Also, it doesn't have any junk in it, and that's probably my favorite part. Right now, Element's offering an eight-pack sample pack free with any purchase. You just need to go to drinkelement.com forward slash carnivorous me. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com forward slash carnivorous me. Remember to bring things in to help with cravings. The electrolyte mix helps well. You can do things like bridge drinks. Literally, it's just a container of liquid you carry around and sip on all day long to try to keep your stomach somewhat full. Water, coffee, tea if you do that, electrolytes. Those are the four. Just sip on it all day long, okay? Another one I like to use is Redmond's Salt Crystal. I made this, by the way. It is wonderful it comes this one's red because it has a bit more minerals in it you literally just suck on it a few times when you're feeling like you are craving something like oh, i'm craving some dark chocolate okay well i'm gonna suck on this a few times drink a little bit of water and nine out of ten times boom the craving is gone these guys are super helpful make it simple some people love cooking and that's wonderful the more complex the recipes are in the beginning, the less likely you're going to want to eat unless you're just like that person that loves to cook. Make the most simplistic meals. Make it easy. Plan ahead. Take your meat out and thaw it the morning, like put it in the refrigerator. So by dinner time, you have no other choice but to eat what you took out. Set yourself up for success. If you're going to have to go somewhere, go grocery shopping, go hang out with some friends, eat before you go. If there is going to be food somewhere, like non-carnivore food, eat until you are stuffed before you leave. Normally, I don't say this, but in this situation, yes. If there's going to be sugar and you're going to be tempted, eat before you go and stuff yourself. Silly. Why? Because by the time you get there, you're so full. Even if you're like naturally like, oh, I want to eat that. You're so full. There isn't room for you to consume it. Okay, set yourself up for success with this. I promise you, I've gone so many times places and afterwards I'm like, oh, we should have eaten before we went. I have learned this lesson the hard way. Don't not do it. I promise it will help. And the last big one for this section is setting up barriers. 
I, in the beginning, would have a small square of dark chocolate here and there when my, my cycle would come. And then I noticed I slowly started slipping and I would have it once a week, twice a week. And I'm like, oh, God, what am I going to do about this? So the barrier I put in place is if I want that dark chocolate, I have to walk or bicycle to get to the grocery store. It has stopped me every single time. Why? Because it's just a momentary craving. That's a lot of effort to go get dark chocolate. Okay. Put these barriers into place. Another good suggestion is maybe you're one of these people that stop at the grocery store or fast food on the way home. Leave your credit card at home before you go to work. If you don't have money, you can't buy it. Now you, yes, you can still go home and go back out, but it's these extra steps that make you slow down and have to truly think, do I want to do this? These are the small barriers that will stop you because binge eating, it's like an automated habit. I remember sometimes just eating stuff and it's just like, why am I doing this? It just, I don't even, it's like someone took over my body and just shoving food in my mouth. I'm not enjoying it. I'm not hungry, but it's just like, I'm a robot in automation mode. Put stuff that slows you down and stops you. Scott reminded me of something else. A good reason to do this, because most people would say, okay, you're doing carnivore, you can't have dark chocolate. I don't know if any of you guys have ever experienced this, but the minute I say I can't have something, it's like, oh my God, I want that. Tell me I can't have escargot, even though I think it's gross. I am gonna want it. So versus saying I can't have it, I choose not to have it. Make it a power of choice. You choosing is different than you can't have. So I choose not to have this. Or if that doesn't even work for you, the same thing with the chocolate and having to bicycle to get there. Make the choice, it empowers you versus forces something on you. And for those that are really struggling and want the extra support, there are plenty of people who do coaching. I myself do it. If you have the time, energy, money, or you really feel like you need it, use that. Use someone else to be your barrier for you to be accountable to. And if you don't want to spend the money, that's okay. There's a lot of groups and things. I'm doing a July challenge. It's completely free. You just need to go to the community section of my channel and it'll explain there. We even have a drawing at the end for everybody that participates and makes it to the end of the month. Okay. These things are out there. You just have to do a little bit of the footwork to find them. So find what's going to work for you. Number five, get your base blood work done, take photos, take measurements, and document your journey, even if it's just in a journal. Okay, for the blood work, I wrote it down because I always forget. These are the tests that I get done every three months. A1C, CBC, which is a complete blood count, advanced cardiac IQR. That R is very important in this test. This tests your particle sizes for your lipid panel. A standard lipid panel is a calculated number. It is not actually looked at under a microscope. It's just not that great to do. A CRP, which is a C-reactive protein, you want the unsensitive. This tests for overall body inflammation. Fasting insulin. This is very important, whether you're a diabetic or not, because you can be a type two diabetic and be insulin resistant. It just means you're on your way to being a diabetic. And a metabolic panel, which tests things like your liver, kidney functions and things. Those are the tests I recommend and they are what I do every three months or so. Six, move daily in whatever that looks like. I don't consider walking exercise to me, exercise has been changed into I am forcing myself to get on the elliptical for 30 minutes to burn X amount of calories. Move daily, whatever that is for you. In the beginning for me, it was getting my own water going up and down the stairs. Then it was doing the dishes. Now I do the dishes every day, Scott. It's lucky. <gasps> <laughs> he used to always do them. And then walking a few hundred feet, walking a few houses, walking a mile to now I can hike uphill. Whatever it is, no matter how small, if you are bed bound and all you can do is roll side to side in the bed, do that. That's actually a good core exercise. Do not diminish where you're at. I just did a video yesterday. Watch it if you need some encouragement. 
celebrate the small things do the small things whether it's going up and down the stairs a few extra times i cannot stress this enough start with wherever you're at don't expect to go walking a few hundred feet with a walker to walking a mile in a month but celebrate you from not walking at all to walking five minutes to maybe 10 minutes by the end of the month whatever it is move a little bit more number seven read jordan peterson's 12 rules for life even if you are not a jordan peterson fan set all of that aside the book is amazing for helping us understand how we got where we got this is what yo-yo dieting you can temporarily or at least i was temporarily changing my diet but i never actually spent the time to look inside and understand how i got to 360 pounds reading this book gave me i tell people when in coaching when i recommend this book it's like a gut punch and a really good hug at the same time it is that kick that I needed to self-assess and be like, okay, Amanda, I got myself there through my own choices and that, not that it's bad, but I got myself there. So if that's the case, then I have the power to get myself somewhere else. It is an excellent book to read to help you understand yourself. Number eight, addressing emotional eating. This can be anxiety, sad, bored, depression, whatever it is. If you are a binge eater, some event in your life, you've tied emotions to eating. I ate to not deal with my feelings my entire life. I learned it from my mom, not that I'm blaming her, but I learned it from her, had traumatic things happen when I was a kid, and then boom, everything was about eating. Happy eating, sad eating, mad eating, just eating because I didn't want to deal with the emotions. I like to journal things. When I'm wanting to eat something bad, writing it down and going through why I want it, understanding it, and writing a reasonable response. We have to address the emotional eating to not make this some yo-yo diet that, that works and doesn't work and then it just, it's so hard on our bodies, yo-yo dieting is. The last two are really important. Number nine is giving yourself grace and understanding we are not perfect. I can tell you countless times I've fallen off a diet because I ate one bad meal or I ate a french fry and it's like, oh God, I'm a terrible person. I'm gonna fail, I'm not gonna make it. I might as well quit and have an entire pizza. That happened so many times. And I know I'm not the only person this happens to. Understand one choice that you make that is away from where you're aiming it's not the end of the world <laughs> cathedrals are made out of blocks and blocks and blocks not just one and that is what is so important to understand there is not a perfect human being on this planet and the thing is is that is okay we are perfectly imperfect this doesn't give license to just say ah whatever i'll eat what i want to eat no just focus on doing the 90%, aiming to make the 90% good. Don't worry about the 10%. And when you do trip up and mess up, give yourself grace knowing there's nothing we can do to change the past. We only have the ability to make a different choice to change the future, okay? This is a huge thing. It took me months to learn this, but I think it is the reason I'm still sitting here today is because giving myself grace for all the times that I fell down. Number 10, and this is the last one for how to do carnivore. Find your why. Your why is what will help bolster you when your initial motivation fails. Willpower is like a muscle. If you use it constantly and rely on it, it always fails. I am just absolutely, my to this day, my willpower is terrible. Finding your why. It needs to be soul moving, not just, I want to lose weight so I'm healthier is too abstract. Why I do this, why I continue on this journey, I want to have a family. I want to have a positive impact on this world. I want to change people's lives for the better. I want to reduce the amount of anguish and pain in this world as much as I can. That is my why. Find yours that moves you along when that motivation wanes. The last part is what to expect in the beginning. I'm gonna to try to do this quite quickly because I know this has already been kind of long for my normal videos. The first week, and this is gonna vary slightly for everybody, okay? The first week is terrible. <laughs> 
you've gone from a standard American diet to eating straight up carnivore, it is hard. Your body will go through carb withdrawals. You'll have headache, fatigue, brain fog, you name it. Drink those electrolytes. Eat more salt. Make sure you're getting enough of this in you, okay? I do things like I use Lugol's 2% iodine because I don't eat tons of seafood. I take a high quality multivitamin from Country Life for women. For, I get from Whole Foods. And those are the things that I do extra plus my electrolytes that I do daily. Those I wish I had started in the beginning. I didn't use electrolytes till a couple months and they do help. Whether you wanna make your own at home, that's a-okay, you can make it a lot cheaper that way, okay? Make sure that you're getting enough water and you are eating enough. It is not abnormal to just have fatigue for honestly a few weeks. It really truly depends on how insulin resistant you are. If you're a type 2 diabetic, using insulin, you're having to do exogenous insulin injections, it'll be even longer. Your body has become very dependent on the insulin and it is highly insulin resistant. Give yourself time. Some people can get in ketosis week to two weeks, boom. Someone like myself, it takes three to four weeks or I guess I should say it took three to four weeks to get there. Everybody's a little bit different, okay? Also, after about day three or four, I had terrible diarrhea for almost five, five and a half weeks. I could not get very far from the bathroom. This is normal. Your gut biome is used to your body feeding it carbs and things like that. The bacteria that lines our intestine, they die off because they're not getting those carbohydrates and your body flushes them out. Your body has to readjust to eating a high fat, moderate protein diet with carnivore, okay? You'll go through periods of time that you're super irritable and you literally can't stand anyone, including yourself. All of these are carb withdrawal symptoms. Sometimes the cravings will be absolutely crazy bad. Once you get to fat burning, the cravings do start to fall off until an emotional thing happens, which if you're a binge eater, that will happen intermittently and stress triggers it, then it's a different type of craving. Yes, you probably still want sugar, but the physiological cravings means you just eat teaspoons of sugar if it's in front of you, okay? It's eating through that. Make sure you're eating plenty of fat. Uh, there's butter bites. I have a video for that. Eat fatty meats. Add tallow to your burgers to up your fat intake. These kinds of things will help satiate you to get past these moments. The feeling bad can last, as I said, can last anywhere from a week to a month. I've had people, it last five weeks and then they start to feel better. It is, I cannot stress this enough. It really truly depends on where you are at with your health, your age, how long you've been a diabetic, if you're not a diabetic, these kinds of things impact it. There is no one size that fits all with this, but do understand it, it's a transition. It really is. Me, aversion can happen. It happened a few times and honestly, every once in a blue moon, I get it now. I know I'm not a big proponent, as I mentioned before, of fasting. This is the only time I would suggest a fast. 12 hours, 14 hours. I made it 37 hours one time, not because I was aiming to fast, but the idea of eating meat made me nauseous. What I discovered is, is if I was starving, I would eat whatever was in front of me without a complaint. So the very fact that I'm looking at the meat and being like, oh, kind of nauseated, it was my want overriding what I needed. I fasted however long I needed to, and every single time that steak, that burger, it was delicious in the end. Cramps can happen. Easily avoidable by doing electrolytes, potassium, magnesium, sodium, these kinds of things. Sleep. I slept really bad in the beginning before carnivore. Mine only got better as time went on. I know some people can experience some sleep disturbance. Do your best at trying to go to bed at the same time every night and wake up about the same time every morning. Try not to have electronics one to two hours before bed. All of this will help you sleep better. This has been a quite long video when I normally do about 10 to 15 minutes. The last little thing I wanted to leave you was tips that I have written down along my journey. I want to share them with you. Cravings equal emotional trigger. Drink water to decrease hunger. Salt rock plus water equals decreased hunger. Think of using my energy reserves, not eating less. Achieves the same thing, but better mindset. Walking increases happiness. 
must find the why. Start small and increase the distance and strength will come with time. Do the small things. Give ourselves grace. We cannot change the past. Anxiety is living in the past and the future, not the now. Clean your room. A disorganized space decreases our motivation. Clean the space around us clears up the space in our mind. Writing things down brings it into being and opens that use space in the mind for other things. Keep track of non-scale victories. It's the small things day to day that keep us going. Get a dog. Remove the junk out of the house, out of sight, out of mind. Plan ahead. Don't put yourself in difficult spots with food. Don't eat out. Choose your choices. Acknowledge your decisions got you where you are, not someone else's. Except yes, you are fat. That was for me. <laughs> no, your weight does not diminish your value. The physical is just a representation of our mind and emotional state. Food is not emotional support. Those past traumas, look at them from your adult eyes, not the young kid eyes. Memories that bother you, write them out in painful detail and then read them out loud. Be your word. Don't say things untrue or you know you cannot hold to. The small lies destroy us. They fracture the vase that is ourselves until it's too broken to be fixed. Our lies fracture our internal voice. This leads to the part of us resenting ourselves. It's that mean voice that tells us we can't do it. Stop the lies. Heal that bond. How? Tell the truth. Make a choice. Making a choice is self-empowering. Letting others choose for you is taking no action in your own life. A mountain is made of many grains of pebbles. Get fat adapted before you worry about the volume of food. Worry about the 90%, not the 10% at the start. Stuck in a funk, do something, walk, move, bike, challenge yourself. I wrote these all throughout my journey in my non-scale victory journal, by the way. These sum up my entire journey. I hope they help you in the start of yours. I appreciate every one of you so very much, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.